Let's bring in the head coach of Good Counsel in Maryland. That is Andy Stefanelli. And here he is. We have the coach on the line. Andy, how are you? Thanks for joining us. Doing great, thanks. Appreciate you having me. Yeah, well, we're we're talking with you. You're the uh, head football coach uh, out in Maryland, uh, only Maryland, Our Lady of Good Counsel. And uh, we want to talk a little football with you. And, you know, just, uh, you know, what, what are football coaches, when, when you're talking about March, you guys, uh, you, you're concentrating on the kind of the, the winter sports and transitioning over to spring. Is that what's going on? Or is it always football? Yeah, for us, it's pretty much football year round. Now we have, uh, you know, multi-sport athletes, of course. Uh, but from a coaching perspective, uh, since we're a private Catholic school, you know, we have uh, incoming classes that uh, that we recruit. And um, so our registration ends tomorrow for eighth graders for next year. So we're trying to put the finishing, you know, touches on that. Um, and then we're um, right now. I'm currently in exit meetings with my current players to wrap up last season, and then to project for next season for the returners uh, with goal setting things like that. And uh, you know, we're in a, we have a full time strength staff there at our school, and they're training our football team three days a week in the weight room and speed and agility work. So, uh, kind of getting ready for uh, spring. When we get to the spring in April, we'll do. We don't do padded practice, but we do have. Uh, skill work and then some field work and of course the weight room continues through for the rest of the year so yeah so that's what we're doing right now yeah well i've noticed i mean you, you've you've been around you're you're no stranger to the football program there i i, I counted just going into your uh, from what i count seventh year i know you got the pandemic and everything so but uh you know you're uh you're an alum back in 83 so you know you, you've you've been around the football program for a long time there so you, you know the ins and outs right yeah, I've been around. Yeah, before I was the head coach, I served ten years as an assistant. So yeah, I've definitely been around the program, uh, you know, for a long time, and uh, uh, been you know, been you know, been kind of the head honcho now for uh, since seventeen. And uh, yeah, but uh, kind of uh, it's been a it's been a you know fun run for me, uh, being around the program and being a part of it for so long. Yeah, it's got to be pretty exciting, too. I was looking at your website. Your guys' website looks like something like, you know, you could see in, you know, college or the NFL or something. It's pretty impressive. But I noticed some of the alums there, of course, of course uh, uh, Stefan Diggs from the Bills. And uh, right in the Big Ten, uh, Mo uh, Ibrahim, who went to the uh, Minnesota Golden Gophers, who's, uh, you know, going to be looking forward to the draft. He's a great back. I mean, those are, are two pretty big-time players, but pretty excited about the prospects uh, for Mo and what he might be able to do at the next level in the NFL, huh? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, he's, he was a you know phenomenal player for us. Great, just an awesome young man as well. And, uh, uh, yeah, I'm excited to see. Somebody's going to get a really good running back. So uh, uh, it's funny because the knock has always been, uh, you know, we're not sure about how fast he is. He's fast enough. And, you know, they can't tackle him, so. <laughs> and he seems to score a lot of touchdowns and run for a lot of yards. So doing something right uh, at every level he's played at. So I'm sure he's going to have a lot of success in the NFL. Yeah, I agree with you. I watch him and, uh, you know, it's it's hard not to be impressed. You know, it's also hard not to be impressed with one of your current players. And uh, you, you have a linebacker, Aaron Childs. Tell us about him. Uh, he's, he's phenomenal. You know, he's a great player. Um, you know, he's, kind of fits the prototype he's got the size and speed that you know you look for in a linebacker in today's game at 6'3 you know, 235 and can run um i think he's a four five forty guy so he he can really run and do it you know he's a sideline to sideline linebacker uh with great cover skills and pass rushing ability uh so you know as he grows and develops if a at the next level, you know, it's going to be really fun to see kind of what he ends up, you know, being in terms of position and role. Um, you know, I think he can, he's just so versatile. He can do a lot of different things. And the college coaches see that, and that's why he's, uh, you know, got, gotten so much interest and in he's being recruited so heavily. And then, you know, on top of that, he's a very good student um, and uh, team leader. He's a team captain as a junior. And, uh, 
and just uh, yeah, really just uh, a really good kid overall. A couple more minutes here with uh, Coach Andy Stefanelli, good counsel, uh, head football coach in Olney, Maryland. Uh, I have his Twitter page up on the screen at a s t e f sixty. And you know, you mentioned all that interest. I, I was just looking at you know, he, I think he released a top ten. Uh, yesterday, uh, Michigan and in Maryland, and it's really a who's who: Notre Dame, Ohio State, Penn State, Clemson, Florida, Florida State, and Georgia. I mean, uh, that's about as uh, pristine as a top ten as you can go out there uh, and get. What do you What do you make of that? <laughs> uh, yeah, there, there's just some pretty good choices he has. Uh, yeah. uh, I'd say, uh, yeah, you know, he's been really good through the recruiting process. I think. It started early for him, and uh, you know, he kind of took it all in. His parents are great; they do a nice job helping him manage it too. And uh, you know, myself and Kevin McFadden, who's our defensive line coach, and helps does uh, Yeoman's work with college recruiting for our players. Um, helps kind of assisting and guiding him through it as well. Um, but yeah, he has a lot of great schools, and um, you know, I think he's finally gotten to the point now where he's narrowing it down. Uh, to, to that top 10 and, and, you know, he's going to take some more visits and really try to pare it down some more for sure. Um, but yeah, that's a, you know, it's an enviable position to have all those great choices, but it's also going to make it awful tough decision. I'm sure. Yeah. Doesn't look like you can go wrong. I, you know, you mentioned as a, a coach there, you, you do recruiting at the high school level. So uh, tell me when the first time you, you heard about Aaron Childs, or was it your defensive coordinator that saw him? Uh, when do you first remember, you know, hearing about uh, your your captain? Yeah, so actually, it's funny. Uh, Kevin helps. I, I I use this all the time because, like, I have our our recruiting coordinator is our our secondary coach, secondary coordinator. His name is JD Knoll, and uh, so he recruits the eighth graders. I tell folks he recruits them coming in the door, and then Kevin helps helps me as they go out the door uh, the college side of it. Um, so, yeah, Coach Noel, uh, you know, we have several youth programs um, that, uh, you know, that we have a good relationship with and that produce really good teams and players you know, year in and year out. And uh, so uh, Aaron played for a, a, a youth organization called the White Oak Warriors. And um, uh, he was, uh, they had a great team and uh, they had a great program. And, um, yeah, well, the funny thing part about Aaron, he was under recruited in eighth grade because he played fullback, H back for this team, and not a lot of linebackers. So a lot of schools don't use fullbacks anymore. So I think overlooked him, and uh, we still use one. <laughs> so uh, I saw that and I said, you know, that kid's tough. He's got nice size, and uh, you know, maybe he's, uh, you know, a lot of times fullbacks can play linebacker too, and. Uh, Boy, we sure hit the jackpot on that one, but <laughs> a little bit of luck goes into that too. But uh, you know, and he fit our profile. Really good student, um, you know, high character kid. Uh, so he could get in, you know, into our school with, through admissions with his academic profile, um, and then uh, you know, just flourished when we got him. He grew a lot, fought into everything. He, of course, he came in during a pandemic, so that was difficult. But as he managed through that, um, you know, just kind of just totally bought in and developed uh, in our program. Um, I quickly realized, yeah, he's a linebacker, and uh, it's, uh, it's been great watching him grow. Yeah, well, it's not a surprise when you, you you know, you hear all the schools that are interested in him. You know, you hear about uh, the academic side, the football side. You know, you're talking about him. I mean, we're talking about one of the, I don't know, certainly top 100 players in the country, even top 50, wherever you want to go. I mean, he's uh, he's up there and everything else. Uh, does it remind you of anybody when you watch him play? Do people say, oh, you know, he, he really looks like, uh, you know, whoever when he's out there? Anybody <laughs> ever drop any names like that? Or do you have one yourself? Well, for, you know, for us, for our, you know, from our program, we've had a couple, we've had some great linebackers. Uh, Jelani Jenkins, who uh, played at Florida and then played for the Dolphins and the Raiders. Uh, uh, he, he's, Similar in terms of size and speed to Jelani. Uh, we have another great one, Akeem Hebron, who played at Georgia. Um, so there's a couple in our program that he reminds some of us coaches who have been around a while of some of those guys. Um, 
you know, I don't know. It's a big game. I'm not, you know, sure. You see college guys all the time that uh, are that size and speed, certainly in the NFL. But uh, those are kind of some guys, you know, within our own program who when we first started seeing him develop, we're like, wow. <laughs> he, he does some things we haven't seen uh, around here in, in a while. Uh, Keandre Jones, um, who plays for the Cincinnati Bengals now, is one of our alums and. uh there's some similarities there with the way he runs. DeAndre could really run and cover, too. So kind of a little bit of a mixture of a couple of those guys for us. That uh, he might be. Yeah, I think it's exciting. I think Michigan fans would be excited because two years ago they went to a 3-4 and they've got these, you know, outside linebackers or, or you know, edges and, you know, Aiden Hutchinson went number two in the, in the, in the draft, you know, standing up and a, a guy that can attack the quarterback. And, you know, they've, they've had Mike Morris and, you know, they've, They've had Quiddy Pay before that. Like they've they've been on on a run of of these type of players. And you just look at Childs, and you know I don't know where he's going to end up going. I don't know if you do either, but you know he, he really he, he looks like you know he could be the you know you mentioned prototypical, but he looks like he could be a great rush edge in in college. Yeah, I really think he could. He he's got the size and strength, and just a knack. Some guys have a knack for it, and he has that. Um, so yeah, those are some good examples of some guys uh, that I think you know, potentially uh, could could kind of follow the, that uh, their, their footsteps. Uh, certainly, if he goes to Michigan, um, I don't know where he's going to go, but uh, I know Michigan is uh, is certainly high on his list. Um, and yeah, we have a great one there now from our school play a few guys. So um, you know that that uh, that probably doesn't hurt either. So uh, and uh, you know Chris Jenkins, of course. Oh, you know, I, that eluded me. You know, Chris Jenkins, I know his dad, you know, uh, played pro football. And he came in, he he came in pretty light. And everybody's like, you know, is this guy going to play? Where's this guy going to play? He, he's going to play <laughs> inside and he's filled in. I mean, he's a, I say great. I mean, he's an outstanding football player. I mean, tell me, so you you, you coach Jenkins. I mean, he's, he's everything that you would want in a college football player. He's awesome. Yeah, Chris. Yeah, Chris was on our uh, our last championship team in the 2019 season, and um, phenomenal. It's funny. I still show the picture. I show the picture of Michigan coaches when they visit of Chris as a sophomore uh, on our team when he weighed 215 pounds, uh, playing you know, defensive end for us. And uh, of course, now he's 300 pounds playing a three technique for Michigan. Yeah, but um, he was always that guy. He could. For us, he could play our edge position. He could go put his hand down and play a free technique. Then he could bump out and stand up and come off the edge of a pass rusher. Um, and just a, just an unbelievable uh, high motor and just tough kid. And, you know, obviously we knew he had great bloodlines with his dad, who was an all Pro Bowl player in the league. And, uh, so again, he, you know, we didn't know. We had a hard time keeping weight on him, really, in high school because he would run track in the spring and lose weight. And then, Walk back up before camp, and um, but man, is he? Uh, he you know, he, it's funny. Like, well, he was that guy who he was really a great. I think Michigan wasn't probably 100 percent sure where he would end up, but looking at his dad, I would just probably figure, well, he might end up with the <laughs> gave him some more weight and be at a, a three tech, and I think it's worked out pretty well. For him. Yeah, I got two real quick questions for you, Coach, and I appreciate your time. Certainly, one, you know, you you think about Jenkins, and, and it's fascinating to me that you guys can go, you know, down to, you know, junior high, seventh and eighth grade, and you can project these players as high school. I know, they, you know, the NFL has a hard time with the college guys projecting them. Some of the pros, uh, it's hit or miss. I remember way back when I started in the recruiting game, I was talking with somebody, you know, in uh, Michigan was interested in this uh, Courtney Brown. He was a defensive end, ended up going to Penn State, and LeVar Arrington as well. And I remember talking with a coach, and I said, well, you know, did you think, you know, like, you, did you do a great job recruiting these guys, you know, when you saw them or seventh or anything? He's like, everybody in the country knew these guys immediately. Like, they knew these guys were going to be in the pros. There was absolutely no question. By the time, you know, sixth, seventh grade, these guys were the best. I mean, is it, is there a lot of that when you go out there? Like, everybody's like, oh, yeah. I mean, you know, like, some of these guys are just sure things. So, you know, how difficult is it projecting when you're talking about players uh, uh, that young? And are, are there some that are just like, uh, absolute grand slams uh, out of the park right when you see them. Yeah, uh, a little bit of both. You know, the, it's very hard to project. Uh, you know, eighth graders, seventh and eighth graders. 
uh, really is. Uh, but some of them, you know, some of the standout players that you see, they do jump out and even at that young of an age, like, wow. You know, now what's really hard to project is how big they're going to get unless they're already, you know, if they're six foot three, you know, eighth grader, okay, he's you know, taking some of the guesswork out of it. Um, but sometimes they're not, and then they grow in high school. And, and so that, that, that makes it very difficult. Um, but yeah, uh, for us, you know, a guy like Stefan Diggs in eighth grade, he was different. Yeah. <laughs> and he was different as soon as he got to our school. And Kendall Fuller plays for Washington. He was different. You know, all his brothers played in the NFL too. So sometimes you do see him and know right away. But um, uh, I'd say it's, you know, it's, it's certainly not always the case. Uh, Chris Jenkins was not a guy that, even though, you know, knowing his dad, you thought maybe he had a shot. He hadn't played a lot of football. In, in, in youth at the youth level. Dad had him doing other things, other sports, and I think it probably ultimately helped him, but, you know, it was a little hard, like, yeah, I don't know, you know, he, he wasn't that accomplished uh, from a technique standpoint, but then when we got him, you know, like how fast the learner he was, how naturally he was at it. Um, but you didn't necessarily know that in eighth grade or seventh grade. So, um, yeah, it's really a little bit of both, and it's very, very difficult, even just to project that they're going to be Division One college prospects, much less guys that can be you know, drafted and play in the NFL. You know, the final question I have for you is just about how high school, you've been around the game for so long, how it's changed. And in college, for instance, like everything has changed so much in just the last two, three years. Uh, you, know, you got a playoff. You've got, you know, you've got teams now that are, are going to be super conferences. And then you got name, image, and likeness and the transfer portal. And, uh, you know, the the ability now for high school players, I mean, they're looking maybe like, hey, I can get this much money and, and everything else. Uh, how has all that affected the high school game? And just what over the last couple of years have you seen like some of the biggest or the biggest change or, you know, you can mention anything about it, but uh, just how you see the game evolving yeah. at that level. Yeah, it certainly changed. Uh, we discussed it quite a bit. Um, in the last two years, it's, it's changed dramatically. Uh, unfortunately, from my perspective, it's not for the better uh, in a lot of areas. So, um, and at our level, you know, for high school football, we play in a very, very difficult or you know, well-known conference in the Washington D.C. area here, and um, it's great football. And our, a lot of our, not only our school, but just other schools in our conference, or a lot of our kids get recruited. Um, so these, some of these things that you're mentioning are going to affect our guys maybe earlier than maybe some places, other places or other high schools, uh, because we have such a, uh, you know, high number of elite athletes and high level recruits at our school and then within our conference. Um, and that's a concern, you know, how do we, it's hard to, harder to, uh, manage expectations. Um, you know, the, the transfer portal in college. Is, is actually hurting high school recruiting because there's these schools are holding spots for transfers that would have normally gone to high gone to high school players, so that's you know making less opportunities for these kids. Um, and then you add the money piece with the potential for NIL and uh, earnings, and that's just really taking off and trickling down to the high school level. Uh, and that's going to make our job even more you know even harder because now. Um, you're adding that component in there and less opportunities with the portal and how they're recruiting. Um, I just see it getting harder and harder to manage the kids' expectations um, and the parents' expectations as it comes to, you know, it comes to uh, recruitment at the collegiate level. Um, and I think also it's going to be harder for the college coaches to coach them because now they can go in the portal anytime and leave. Uh, and it's really hard to build teams a team, you know, atmosphere when it's just, hey, if we don't like this, we're going to go somewhere else. And that mindset seems to be more pervasive even at the high school level because the stakes, I guess, are even higher now. So um, that's how I see it. <laughs> I wish it was uh, – I wish that they would get it under control a little bit. Um, but I, 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 right as, of, as of right now, I don't see much changing. I don't either. It's It's fascinating. I know this, it, you know, it keeps me busy, which, you know, I actually like, you know, things to talk about, but I'm not, uh, I'm pretty sure that with coaches, you guys already have enough on your plate. You don't need, you know, 365. You're already going 365. Hey coach, we certainly appreciate your time. You know how valuable that is. Uh, I, I know, uh, 
you know, you're, you guys are always looking for the, you know, the next thing and, and working hard. So we, uh, we appreciate your time. Thanks so much for coming on here on the Maze and Blue Review. Absolutely.